we have the 300 SL featured here with a high temperature furnace. Uh, you will notice I have the adjustable head and it's all the way up. This is a three foot addition to the standard height of the machine. The cross head is in the utmost position here. We have sacrificial studs that we use that you can change out your tooling to do a high temperature test, a room temperature test, or if you're doing flats, it'll do the, the flats at room temperature as well. This machine is calibrated from 120 pounds to 60,000 pounds. So the 300 kilonewton machine will give you that full range. In this setup, I have a, a 252 threaded specimen under high temperature that we will swing into view and show how the sacrificial stud with the adapter sliding the load train in place will give you ease of use for your high temperature tests. I can have multiple furnaces on this frame at one time with the load train and sample soaking ahead of time. So while the test is going on, the operator can swap out the load train with specimen and get the next one pre-soaking. So you're swinging the furnaces in and out to get you the value that you're looking for out of your machine. On a screw powered machine with a load cell, you might damage the load cell over time because the heat transfers up to the load cell, which will give you bad readings. With the 300 SL or larger machines, you can do this hot temperature test and you will get the same result. The high temperature test is not gonna affect anything because the load cell is in the pressure of the piston and cylinder. We read that load very accurately and very repeatably. We can also equip it with a high temperature extensometer that slides in. It stays on through yield. After yield, Horizon will tell you to remove the extensometer. You just slide it back out of the way and take the, the specimen to failure. This machine is set up for the, for the high temperature furnace test, which is a tensile test. You can still use this machine for compression tests. In this zone here, it will do your bend, your flex, your peel, all those different tests, calling it uh, a universal testing machine. That's where the UTM comes into play. It meets the ASTM, the ISO, the British standard, it is CE marked. Uh, they are populated all over the world. It is a low pressure system, meaning that you don't have to worry about the high pressure hoses under high pressure all the time. So you're not getting the heat build up with a lot of other machines. They're a higher pressure. In certain environments, they get very warm. Even though I'm doing a high temperature test, it's not affecting the hydraulic oil at all. So you can run it for days, doing hot tensile and it doesn't affect it, it just keeps on going. The software is integrated into the machine. It runs multiple machines. I can have a plastics lab with a impact, a melt indexer and a tensile machine all configured into one software. I can have multiple hydraulic machines with one computer. I can have multiple furnaces on here that I'm plotting the temperature. So I have a graph with my stress strain curve. I'll also have a graph with my temperature test plotting that, proving that when I ran the test, I was at the temperature that is specified in your spec. And it's all conveniently in the software that you can store it. It, it has a recall mode that you can bring back old tests to replay. It has the ability that you can network the software so you can have the software reside on your network where another employee, maybe a manager in his office can recall the test from his office, see the results and export them to wherever they need to go because they're residing on the network server. So now I've got the 300 SL ready to uh, do a high temperature test. All I have to do now is slide the furnace into place. It's been soaking for a half hour now and I'm going to slide the furnace in to the adapters that are hanging in place. Now the furnace is in place. I let it stabilize and then I can start the test. I can actually set the set point 
in horizon that it times out when it reaches temperature, I will automatically start the test and it will load the specimen till it fails. Once the test is started, I'll get my stress strain curve. Once it yields, it will alert me to remove the extensometer and you take the specimen to failure. And then once it's failure, you can slide this out of the way, slide the next furnace in, and then take the broken specimen, do your measurements while the next test is going on. Put the specimen in that waiting furnace, close it, set it, and this test is now underway running.